130 degrees, 110, 140, 300, 269, bro. 313. These are some warm, warm, warm tubes. I know a lot of time you get like a little tiny like FX audio tube amp and everyone's like, oh, it's fake. No, no. The son of a bitch is cooking. Excuse the situation right now. So, N... FJ and FX Audio. Now, the last thing I did of theirs was that $280, basically 8018 competition speaker amp with a headphone out and it had the remote control and it was terrible. It didn't sound that great. It was pretty powerful, but the menu was completely fucked. It was just, ugh. So, one of my patrons who I met at the LAN was like, you gotta try this. And here it is. This is the Tube P1. And it is hooked up to capacity and it is currently running my HD 600s and it's a solid offering it's I think a lot of companies falter Emotiva when they try to get into like the software aspect of things like the like they could build the hardware they could build the amps and they could build the power supplies and they but as soon as you try to give it like a menu and digital buttons it's like oh hired Tom to do it. Who's Tom? He's that guy that hangs out under the bridge. So, this, let me put these back on so that I might listen to the Fight Club soundtrack. Can I pick this up? Ah, it's mildly warm. We've got four tubes, one button, a quarter inch plug, a volume knob that's analog. The back's got a transformer, which is right there. How big are you? Oh God, oh this fucker's hot too, holy shit. 12 volt, four amp. Okay, the transformer's at 138 degrees. That transformer may not be big enough for this unit. Cause it's doing two things and it's got... That's hot, this is hot. Everything here is hot. Back to the back of it. As the Fight Club soundtrack slowly plays in my, quietly plays in my head. I'm lowering this a little bit so I'll get arrested. Um, speaker outputs. Okay, mute that for a second. Um, yeah, speaker outputs. And it's got 4 ohm and 8 ohm and then common grounds. And then so you could choose what your speakers are running at. And then you have full phono preamp here, which is going to said turntable. In fact, let's, let's kick this on. Give, give it a little, little help spin because the belt's loose. And I've got the input, the only analog input that's not a phono is RCA, it's coming from the Gashai Labs. So, all analog here, just input, input, output, plug in headphone, clicks internally, plays headphone. Now, HD600s, um, which are probably like the gold standard for using them on a tube, works, it, it does work. And I get them, it, I can max the volume knob out. And honestly, it's, it's a damn good, it's a damn good entry level for a tube, holy shit. I have, also have out my Aeolus, which, I don't tube very often, but they are that signature that, like if I could back that fucking thing up a little bit, make it a little bit wider, that's a benefit of a tube. And, because none of you have a fucking idea, the costs, UR40s with 1540 pads, which I think the pads cost way more than the headphones. But um, those sound interesting on tube as well. But you know, the 600s are the go-to. And so let's just get this out of the way at the beginning of the video. Hi everybody. Well, down the wallpaper in the description, uh, link to this, and yes, it'll power HD600s, and yes, it powers them well, and yes, it sounds good, so, and I would like to tell you how much these, this costs, but I've been to Amazon, and there's like four brands selling it. I fucked it up. Fuck that up. Oh man, I'm a bad person. But this is Z-Reviews, and if you fuck up in real life, I'm a real man. A real man. And if I fuck up, I'll admit to that. 
and then we'll fix it on camera. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about the unit a little bit more. This is an amazingly good $112 to $190 tube amp, depending on what's links in the description. I might put like six of them because they're all the same and they're all in silver. None of them are in black. And ignore this. This is the owner's and I need to remember to give it back to him and if it moves, it'll be gone. This is great for, for headphones. It literally is. You give it a good signal from a DAC, you put on headphones. It's actually a little bit narrower soundstage than I'd like for a tube, but I'm thinking that's just stock tubes doing things, but it does give you like a little bit more warmth, a little bit more warmth, and it, it calms things down. I'm looking in the tube amp, here's what I'm looking for. Change the sound. If I go from this to this, I should hear a difference. Blatantly, 789 is like top tier of the world, so I shouldn't even be comparing. I should be plugging it into like something more normally good. Own X1S. Still a great fucking amp, by the way. Linked in the description if I could find it. It's usually on mass drop, though. Yeah, it adds that little bit of the little bit of like fuckery that I like in a tube amp. So that's it passes muster. It passes muster for that. What makes this special compared to all the other tube amps I reviewed, pretty much. Is now we're running speakers. And these are the Emu like Emu Teak. These are the Emu XM7s sold by Creative Labs. Like Creative Labs, Creative Labs, but they're speakers and they're really nice, actually. And um, I can tell you this much, it is a tube amp, it, it makes a certain number of watts, I don't know what that is, find it in the specs somewhere in China, and it pushes these speakers perfectly fine for a desk, except if you want to go a little bit more, and let's get to a more upbeat, I'm not shuffling, shuffle? This will more upbeat. Oh my god. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> to answer my earlier query, no. You don't really want to do this. Alright, let's try to find something that's less. Less that. And I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. In fact, I'm going to use this time on my massive channel. Massive! Massive to plug the Rad Hot Chili Peppers. The Red Hot Chili Peppers have a terrible production quality. The fucking asshole producer there is just like, I don't know, fuck it up real bad. Yeah, that sounds great. Fuck you. You know who you are. I forget his name. But um, we were at a place and there was a live band playing and it was the Rad Hot Chili Peppers. And we're in a bar and I did my first Irish car bomb, which was very gentle. And I was like, fuck you, I can do anything I want. And I listened to the Red Hot Chili Peppers songs being played by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and it was an amazing experience because I've never actually heard those songs not fucked up. So all pra all be praised to cover bands, especially the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which are local to probably New Jersey or somewhere around the PA area. Um, link to them in the description if I could find their band page. Are they on MySpace? Do they have a Tinder account? Could an entire band have a Tinder account? Would you like to fuck the entire band? Oh my god! I feel like that's a c album cover. Although no one has CD covers anymore. Spaceballs love theme. What did you think it was gonna get normal in here? No, this is the love theme from Spaceballs. Now, I can distort these speakers. If you go past the 12 o'clock mark, and I haven't been turning the knob past 12 o'clock, it's been getting loud enough at like 11. But if you go past 12 and certain songs, a lot of bass, you get the crackles. And that's just the limitations of tubes. Actually, while I'm talking about the limitations of tubes and crackling, let me um, fix this. That's the limitation of tubes and crackling. How would, how would Albert Einstein have fixed this issue? Probably go around this first. Yeah, you can't push a tube amp to like a extremely high breaking point for power. Wow, I messed that up bad. I'm gonna hold this. You want the how how fast do you guys want the vinyl? 
I'm going to put it up real high at first. Oh, man, I'm bad at this. How much do you guys want the vinyl review? Because I'm going to review specifically this record player or this turntable. Whatever you're, however old you are determines how you want me to say that. But at the same time, wow, this has never fallen off. Ladies, it's never fallen off like this before. I don't understand. That won't happen again. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Come on, baby, start. Do. Do, yes. Switching this over to phono. Turning this shit up. And here we go. This is PC Power Me, who is actually a patron. Puts this out. He's a patron and a follower and... He sent two copies, a red one and a blue one. Pasta demanded the blue one because it's more rare, and I use the red one for demoing. I'm pretty sure this won't get copyright striked. Oh, so here's the problem with the phono, right? Now that I'm talking all that shit, it has a phono preen, uh, pre preamp, not a preamp, not a preamp, preamp. But I have to turn it all the way up, all the way up to get to this volume, and this is not. If I switch, turn it all the way down and I switch back to the RCA, which is one press, by the way, it's long press to turn on, short press switches between phono and RCA inputs, and then long press to turn off. Also, there's LEDs, red LEDs under these center tubes that they've actually built in the circuitry to light them up slowly. So that they look like they're glowing with the tubes because they, they don't glow because they're little, they, they do glow, but they wanted to really get that tube glow. So I'm glad it's not blue, but at the same time, I feel like you're lying to me because you put red LEDs under there. But anyway, back to um, Christian McBride, which is not exactly loud. Dead Mouse, where's the drop? Superbia. This is halfway in the volume. And now, this is halfway in the volume for Phono. So it needs like all the volume and it's still not quite there. So, you could use it as a phono pre, but it lacks. It lacks the volume, and you're either going to have to get a signal booster, or I'd almost... See, I don't think you could run a phono pre in between the phono and the thing, because it has a phono and you can't disable it, so you'd be, you'd be fucked. So it's quiet. Now, this could also be affected by the needle and the turntable itself, what it's putting out. So, it's just, it's just quiet. The RCAs... I'm playing through headphones, Jesus. By the way, someone jokingly asked in my um, uh, patronage chat, the Telegram, the $10 a month patron chat, if you're in that, he said, oh, Zeos has painted headphones. I bet he wouldn't even sell those for like two grand. Bullshit, you could have these for two grand because I know how much they cost, like $325, and I can get more paint. So if you'd like to spend $2,000 on my personalized set of uh, HE600s, um, Join my patronage chat and ask me for it. I expect the check in the mail. So now, it's the same deal with the headphones and the vinyl. Headphones and vinyl, it's just too quiet. It's just, like it's playing and you can hear it playing. It just needs more. So, I would love to tell you that you can get this and you can hook up your vinyl player to it, but it's just, it will make it go. It just won't make it go loud. The only thing you could do is get more efficient speakers. And to correct a lot of people's notions on this, bigger speakers are more efficient. Those giant fucking... It, that wallpaper's not for you. Those... Actually, that's in the What Do I Have Left to Review review video will be that wallpaper. Those giant JBL towers, if I hook those up to this amp, it push vinyl to listenable levels. The problem is smaller speakers, when I when I give that a half a watt, it moves those big drivers like this much. It's like barely moving them, but they're huge, so sound comes out. This, if this moves that exact same amount, it's barely audible. So bigger speakers, bigger massive monstrous speakers are actually usually more efficient than little tiny bookshelves. Wait till I get to the Micah RB42s, you're gonna be like, oh, oh, so. I'm gonna try to shorten this video up. It's, it's, there's not much else to say other than everything's cooking on my desk. Are we still at? 
Where, where's the actual reader on the bottom? So let's see, down here, 350 degrees internally, 117 on the case, 127 on the case. The case itself is 127 degrees. 118, 131, the, they're like 100. The volume knob is 94 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll give it to you in Celsius now, boys, hold on. Uh, you know that 48% of my audience is American and the rest is international, so hello, hola, and all those other ways to say hello. If Please, educate me. Say hello. So I'm going to say hello in the comments of this video. There will be one comment that says hello in English. And please reply to that comment with every way your country says hello. And then the trolls came. But here we go. Um, 159 Celsius. 152 Celsius. The volume knob is 35 Celsius. 45 Celsius. 54 Celsius. And this power brick is 59 Celsius. 140 degrees. What are you doing? This is going to burst into flames. I've never had one of these get this hot. I actually do not trust that. If you buy one of these, and I think you're going to because it is damn good with this, please keep an eye on that. That worries me. Because that you're going to bury, the papers are going to fall on it, it's going to be stuck behind your desk. And it's not a complicated one. It probably needs to be like 8 amps. Maybe I'll link in the description a 12 volt 10 amp. They're cheap enough. You can use the same connector. Uh, just, just consider upgrading the power supply. I haven't done that in a while. I like this thing. How does it sound with speakers you didn't say? Well, the thing is... By the way, Quigley Down Under, another great movie. I think it loses a little bit of low end. I think it's lacking in the power it needs to actually push speakers, inefficient speakers as, as well. But I am getting that little bit of like like delay and echo. And you can hear the ting, so hold on. If I turn that up. Oh, you can't hear it there. Huh. I heard the ting before. I've definitely heard the ting. That means the sound is actually coming through the tubes because they actually are sensitive to vibration. I'm gonna link to this below. I'm gonna link to her below. I'll link to these speakers. Uh, I'll link to the UR40s. What else is I going to link to? A 10 amp transformer. Lift. Park. Off. Close. You following me now? I'll link to some stuff. I'll link to HG600s, which it's almost worth buying HG600s just in case you get a 2 amp. Because they are like the most neutrally, perfectly balanced, just, there's this big ball of wool, and you throw them in a tube and you get that wool a little bit wonky. So, I like this. It's just gonna cook your house to the ground, possibly. And I like it for speakers, mostly. If you have bigger, more efficient speakers, Clips should be perfect on this. Like Klipsch RP150s or 160Ms, linked in the description, would be perfect for this, because those things are like 100 dB per watt. So. I approve of this NFJ and FX Audio. I don't approve of how hot the motherfucker gets and how hot that gets, and that the that's a little bit low. But again, every turntable is going to be different. So yeah, um, check out. Like I said, the Patreon, five dollars a month gets you into the yard sale. Which if I would have bought this unit instead of having it given to me or, or loaned to me, this would be in the yard sale next month from the first to the tenth. You'll be able to bid in this, bid twenty eight dollars and eighteen cents. And if you live in America, you win, I pay shipping. If you live in Norway, you win and you pay half shipping. So that's how the yard sales work. You get to see these videos a week early or more, and you get to ask me any questions you want. If you are a $5 tier, you get to message me on Patreon. If you're a $10 tier, you're in a private Telegram chat with me, and you can at Zeos Pantera me, and I will answer your questions 12 times a day, 18 times a day. You also get a lot of behind the scenes stuff, like that whole measuring thing. I'm probably gonna tell them about it right now, which is days before I even upload this, which is days before it even ends up on the Patreon, which is days before it goes out to the fucking public. So if you want to be very informed about future purchases, $10 cheers where it's at. Now, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you all again uh, tomorrow. Wallpaper.